There we go. Hello. And am I calling you Andrew? Yes, mate. Andrew, how are you doing? You all right? I'm good. Yeah, I've never been an Andy. Never been. No. Why? Why is that? It's just never stuck. It doesn't doesn't fit. Doesn't no, it don't me. fit. Because yeah, quite. I do actually know quite a few Andrews, and they they all tend to go by the uh, the moniker Andy. But yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. I've, I've never been one of the Andys. Let me let me give now. I know I know if um, if you're watching, I don't know a few months ago when I think I first mentioned that uh, Andrew was going to come on. I did mention Andrew then and say a little bit about him. And I know I was I did talk about him. I think yesterday as well. It's when I was doing one of those uh, streams with my daughter in the morning that don't really count. But Andrew is he's our first YouTuber. Quite often, obviously, everybody you know tends to be Twitch, and maybe you guys are familiar with them through through Twitch or through our little social circles and stuff. But I came across Andrew. And I know I have told this story before, but I'll tell it again. As, you know, a lot of you will know, uh, uh, every other Wednesday, myself and Anatomical Bomb here, Dan, do a little horror chat show uh, where we're working our way through the In Search of Darkness uh, films featured in that documentary. And uh, I always read around the subject. Reading around the subject means I go on Internet Movie Database, go on Wikipedia and watch various YouTube videos. And uh, <laughs> you know that, that's it. That's what it is a lot of the time, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but no, but no, but this is it. This is where the compliment comes. But so uh, when I came, I've come across Andrew a couple of times because uh, uh, he's reviewed various films that me and Dan have looked at. And genuinely, I've just always been struck by just how insightful uh, Andrew is, how kind of knowledgeable he is, how eloquent he is. Uh, passionate he is and he, he's just a fantastic YouTube channel and, and you know we'll give you a you know obviously we'll give you a plug at the end but uh, I know some of you have I know some of you have gone and subscribed uh, or are following uh, Andrew on Twitter and stuff because I've noticed that but but yeah I you know I just find Andrew, a lot of the kind of YouTubers and stuff it's all just kind of and a lot of it is American stuff but it is that kind of yeah really enjoyed the killings and um, then they're looking at their little internet movie database. And uh, did you know that the original person cast for this part was John Travolta? And but but it, it, it's really it's really great. And thank you for coming on. Uh, for thank you being as obviously foolish as you are to uh, to agree to come on to this. Well, this is my first Twitch, so it's, there we go. Um, I'm, I'm I'm glad that your first YouTuber is having his first Twitch. Yeah, that works out really, really, really nicely. Uh, how long have you been doing the um, the YouTube thing for? God, it's been it's been a long time now. I probably try to think maybe five or six years. I'm gonna say I thought it was at least four for what I've seen from when on little videos yeah, come yeah, up yeah. and it said like four years ago and things like that. Yeah. Well, man, uh, you've you've been working at it hard, very hard. I have, and you know, I might. I'm... I might have been more successful at it if I talked about how much I liked the killings, <laughs> or just or that's just, what you need. Yeah, just regurgitated the plot. That's exactly what you need to do. That's it. That that, that you, you, you're too good. You're too good for your own good. That's I'll, the problem. I'll, I'll start tomorrow. You know, it, I mean, you know, it, it, if anything, you know, everything that I'm I'm criticizing these YouTubers for doing is pretty pretty much what me and Dan do every other Wednesday. You yeah, know? I'm not. I mean, don't set the bar too high. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to be... No, that's true. I'm probably not going to be in, and, insightful. Uh, and you are drinking a, a hobgoblin as well, I believe, you said. There we go. Look at that. That 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 will that will get us get us going. Look at that. Oh yes, and yeah, I know we've had Ashens on, but Ashens is on. Ashens is on. I mean, look, we get Andrew on, and look at this, Jeff. Ashens has been on YouTube for 16 years and has 1.5 million followers. Yes, but he's a Twitcher as well. He's a Twitcher as well, isn't he? I mean, a solely YouTuber, a sole YouTuber. 1.5 million. Yes, that's yes, that's Athens. Yes, who who who, wow. who's a, who, who is a YouTuber. He's also on Twitch as well. Yeah, yeah. So the first uh, uh, thing I'm gonna ask you, then, Andrew, is what I ask everybody yeah, yeah. for the first time. Uh, the first question I ask everybody is. Why then? Why then the perfume of the Lady Black? Why? Why was that the uh, suggestion? I, uh, after your very kind invite, I wanted to I wanted to use it as an excuse <laughs> to to check out a movie that had been in my to watch pile for a long time <laughs> that, I, that I hadn't got round to. Um, an awful lot of those are Italian horror movies from the seventies and eighties because I I have I have just fallen in love with. With, with that particular subgenre. So 
it, it, yeah, it was a blatant excuse to check out a movie that I've been meaning to watch for ages. Because for a second, I wondered if you were going to say, you know, if it was going to be, because I just couldn't really be bothered with them, and it was something that 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 it was a you know a genre that I wasn't particularly that bothered about. But no, it's just something that. So what is that? That's a recent thing. You just you kind of really getting into in Italian horror at the moment. It's sort of the 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 genre that I knew the the least about. It's the one that I've gotten into the most recently, and I just fell hard for it. Yeah, um, and it's 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 got to the point where I've got I've got. I've got a lot of films that fit into that box that I haven't that I own but haven't seen yet because I I want to stretch it out. I want, I want, yeah, to, yeah, I want yeah. to make it last rather than just blast through yes. all of them. I want to use them as sort of treats and special occasions to check out to check out uh, the next one. So this was perfect opportunity. And our three because we look uh, me and <clears throat> Dan who do, do the, the horror thing every other words we yeah. we did Inferno. We we looked at Inferno Ooh. very early on. And I think so. Are we, we're talking our, th- are our three biggest kind of horror Italian directors: uh, 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 Lucio Fulci, uh, Mario Bava, and then Dario Argento. Yes, absolutely. That, that, absolutely. That's our kind of holy trinity, isn't it? Those are the three biggies. Um, you've got. Um, oh, I'm going to blank on his name. Mario Bava's son. Right. Lamberto Bava, okay, uh, as well has got has got a few. Um, Lamberto and Mario helped Dario Argento with second uh, second unit on Inferno, as it happens. Right. Um, yes, I remember uh, that being one of the little internet movie database facts. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. I yeah, found. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and there's um, there, there's there, there's a few others, but yeah, th- those are the, th- those are the big three. <laughs> And they they they're not directing this. This is this is uh, Fran- Francesco Barilli, yeah. who uh, uh, from what you can see, he he did one other basically, film. yeah, yeah. But, as far as I understand, he was he was an actor. He, he did a, did a couple of films, and then that's it. Done a bit of TV, as done a documentaries, director. but as a director, yeah, this and yeah. Hotel Fear, which was which was four years later, but but which surprises me because. It is so well directed. Looks great, doesn't it? It looks fantastic. Yeah, in in a completely different way to how uh, Inferno and uh, Suspiria and Argento stuff. Completely yeah. different way. But again, the color palette in particular, and and I mean, we'll get into this, I suppose. But and again, is yeah. and how much is foreshadowing. How much is uh, misinsen, misinsen, misinsen? Uh, how much is that? I'm. I don't know with this thing. I don't know if you felt this. Did you find? Were you? Did you feel you were maybe reading too much into it at times, or you were looking for things that maybe weren't? Um, I think there are. I think there are two readings of this movie. Uh, one that it's a super dense work of genius, and, <laughs> and the other is that uh, more or less nothing happens. <laughs> For yes. about seventy minutes, and then it goes insane. <laughs> yeah, I, I, maybe the, and this could be a fault of mine because I, I am, I'm a bit of a fence sitter at times. Okay. Yeah, I wonder if it's maybe in between. I, I wonder if it, it just is a very clever film, but maybe at times I have thought, oh, so does that symbolise this? Does that symbol? And again, we'll get onto that. I imagine. But, I'm sure we will. But yeah, I'm not too sure myself. I, I think it's definitely reaching. To try and attain some sort of artistic yes level level of meaning. Yes, I keep going. Are we are we spoiling it by the way? Or yes, we... spoiler. Yeah, uh, okay. how we go by is oh, you know, we want to discuss it properly. Can't discuss it properly if we don't talk about spoilers. So. Spot on. Yes, spot on. So yeah, I spent I spent the entire film going. Oh, what what's the symbolism of the butterflies? What does that mean? Oh, yes, the flower, the flower motif. Hippopotamuses. Yes, hippos. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all, all the way through, and then the ending happens. And I'll tell you what I—I'll tell you what I feel that the intention maybe was. It, it feels like a lot of clues without a definitive answer. And yes. I kept thinking about some of the more out there works of David Lynch. I actually think David Lynch is more successful at what he does than *The Perfume of the Lady in Black*. Yeah. 
But the impression I get with a lot of David Lynch stuff is that he he knows what everything means in the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he won't necessarily tell you what what everything means. I just think he's much more successful at putting stuff like that uh, together. I don't think everything has a meaning no, in this no. in this movie. Well, I mean, you bring up a good point. The hippos, which you... So, so again, it, mm. I, I've always got to try and remember some people might not have seen it, so I've got to explain. Yeah, yeah. But, but uh, one of the characters, an old gentleman who lives in the apartment building, uh, is presumably obsessed with hippos. He's at the yeah. zoo photographing, but only hippopotami. Only That's hippos. all I'm yeah, interested yeah. in. And then yeah. in his house, when we see inside his flat, it's just, it's littered, congested with hippo uh, 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 ornaments and stuff. Yeah, and, and, and yeah. he's painting his latest hippo model when he gets when he gets off. Yes, and well, at the very start, he's holding something in his hand when the camera's travelling up, and I presume that was probably a hippo that he was doing something with. He had something oh, in his hand, and I didn't notice what it was at the time, but my presumption afterwards, oh, I bet it was some, some hippo thing. And even the hippo, the hippo he has on his desk is what looks like maybe a pencil holder and it's got very yeah. kind of, again, those kind of very vibrant red, uh, a pencil stuck into it again, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's got that violent kind of uh, a nature to it. Again, whether, again, whether that's, inten- I would imagine that yeah. probably is intentional. It's right. I'm sure that is, you know, in the foreground, One, isn't it? Just but, reminded me what I intended to do was go, I'm sure, I'm sure there's an Aesop's fable about, about the hippo. There's this, because the film is also slightly obsessed with, with, uh, Alice's Adventures in yeah. Wonderland and through the through the looking glass. And I was I was wondering, oh, is there an Aesop's fable about the hippo? I mean, it sends you on purpose, the film kind of sends you scurrying down these little yeah, yeah. rabbit yeah. holes. Yeah. Um, searching for, for meaning. Um, one of the things I wrote in my notes, which is which is a bit beard stroking, a bit wanky, forgive me. But there's there's loads there's lots of signs with no signifiers. There's lots of things. Yeah. They're, in, they're, they're everything is imbued with meaning. Everything means yeah, yeah, something, yeah. or is or is presented as though it's absolutely meaningful and vital yeah, yeah. Uh, to the story it's telling. But we're not going to tell you what <laughs> what it means. That it means yes. So yeah, some people will find that in, intensely annoying. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, but I found. <sighs> Quite often I'll sit and watch. So yesterday I watched the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre Netflix. <laughs> yes, and and quite often watching a movie can be a very passive experience. It's it's, it's not often that I sort of mentally sit forward and, and engage with frames and, and look yes. at things in the yeah, background yeah, and go, yeah. oh gee, that yeah. that that butterfly in that frame, that's the same color as her dress and all this kind of stuff. And it does invite you to go a little bit nuts about about the whole thing. Yeah, which is possibly. Again, On is it purpose? Per- you're getting paranoid like she is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're dealing with a with a with her character, our main character. Most of it's from her perspective. She's already off at the start, and yeah. she just she's she's on the verge of a nervous breakdown, and and her, her psyche completely fractures by the end of it. Well, well, but, see. But- Seeing as we, I suppose, seeing as we, I mean, we, seeing as we got quite deep into it already with the whole thing. <laughs> then, yeah. then, you know, th- there is. I think this is why you are guessing a lot because. The right, I mean, from the very first shot is the is the boats going across the uh, the fountain, and I immediately thought, oh, is that foreshadowing something? And it doesn't foreshadow anything in particular. But then, of course, we find out no. that well, I suppose this is foreshadowing, even though it's a past event. But we find out that her father died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On a boat. Yeah. And then you think, well, the boyfriend being obsessed with the taxidermy, having all the taxidermy stuff. You yeah. know, well, of course, these animals have had their guts rip, rip, ripped out, like, spoiler alert, of course, Sylvie does at the end. And again, you think, one, of course, it's, it works Ooh, at a creepy okay. level. It works at yeah, a creepy yeah. level, doesn't it? But again, is is that just what they're going for? Or is it that foreshadowing of, oh, you know, having this collection of things that have had the guts ripped out of, you know? You know well, I, did I, I you notice... Know. Did you notice... So... Uh, a number of times in the movie, there's 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 uh, raw meat. The first time, the first time we see it is when she's preparing steaks for Roberta, right, her boyfriend, okay. and she's she she, she takes yeah. the cleaver to those. It's not the first time we saw her with the cleaver. She sort of, she she wanders around on her own with that quite a bit. But right. uh, when she's at the zoo with the guy who's taking the photographs of the hippos, passing them in the background is a guy uh, with a couple of 
Yeah, you uh, see, and again, stuff I didn't pick up on. A couple of, sort of legs of uh, uh, raw lamb that he's taken yes. to feed the big cat that they've just been at, and there's, and then later on, that same guy feeds his cat yes. a plate of raw meat, which has a, fi- a human finger in well, it. Well, a and mannequin's that's when finger. Really stuck. I think you might have found it was a mannequin's finger. <laughs> oh, was it? No, I no. See, what I, I mean, thought... is is how fake it oh, looked. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Very, no, very, absolutely. very fake. Um, yes, I mean, of course, yeah, the stuff I did, yeah, I didn't pick up on this stuff. I mean, there's things that, oh gosh, I, yeah, all right, maybe I'm getting too far into it now, and maybe, I, maybe I need to build up to this. I, 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 I don't know, I suppose. But so it's got, it's quite clear, isn't it? It's got rosemary. Rosemary's baby vibes to it. Big time. Big Being time. in an apartment, people conspiring against uh, her, getting paranoid, going insane. In, 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 in. And I, I believe apparently it was a purposeful inspiration. I believe uh, 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 B- uh, Birilini. B- 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 oh, God, I've forgotten his name already. The director. Uh, Birillini. Bir- Birilli. 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 There we go. Birilli. Um, that, yeah, he was purposely inspired, I think, by Polanski. Uh, 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 Repulsion, which I haven't seen. Um, I've not seen Repulsion either. I've, I saw that mentioned a lot yes. online. Oh, it's, uh, Boris Heavily from Repulsion. Does it? Don't Does know, it? If anything. you say so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I'll go for it. Uh, um, uh, but, yeah, and, and also, I mean, there is a bit of a link. I mean, I... <laughs> I'm not sure if I saw this massively myself, but people have said that yeah. Mimsy Farmer, who is who plays Sylvia, our lead character, you know, feels quite like Mia, Mia Farrow. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if physically how much she looks, but she has got, she looks, she's got, I mean, she's great. She's, it's a great performance, yeah. actually, really sweet yeah. and vulnerable, isn't it? Like wide eyed yeah. and very much so. Because she, I, I mean, she she has to carry the whole thing, doesn't she? Let's, well, let's yes, yeah, and, and she's in like almost everything, just about, isn't she? Yeah. I think she and she's mainly way. reacting to stuff as well, mm. rather than rather than being active. She's quite a passive character as well. So, I uh, if, if she hadn't have pulled that off, I'd have gotten bored. Yes, I'd have got bored with the film yeah. because one of my other notes uh, that I wrote was literally in capital letters. What is this film about? And I think it was probably <laughs> about, about it was probably about an hour in, and yeah. we're just following this woman around. It's like, what? Why? <laughs> and, well, and I, I, why I, I should think, I be interested in it? I think she kind of got stereotyped. Well, not stereotyped, but I think this was a bit of her forte playing this character as well. From what I'm aware, I, I, have you seen her in anything else? Because I, I haven't. But seen her in uh, Dario Argento's Four Flies on Grey Velvet. That's right. Okay. It. I know. She, uh, I think I she will, did quite a few Italian horror movies and things, didn't she? Apparently, but I think she sort of found got got a wind in her sails of her career over in Italy. On the basis of this, I'm gonna I'm gonna seek out more of her work. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, she's fantastic. And w- with you saying like what, what, like what it's about? See, I don't think, I don't think throughout the film, I was thinking what is this film was about. I think I knew what it was going to be about. I was wrong in the end because because you don't really get those answers. No. And it, and it does... Again, I'm not sure if it's purposely wrong-footing you or if it's just setting up things that I explained. But, but again, I, with the foreshadowing where the... Uh, is he called Andy? Is the character called Andy? Where he sucks the blood out of her hand when she's pricked it yeah. on the uh, tennis racket. Yeah, yeah, so, again, yeah. that's a bit of foreshadowing, isn't it? But, I mean, that scene there, there's a good scene. What... What's the setup of that scene? Because my presumption when that happens is, oh, they've done that on purpose. They've they've put a nail in there on purpose. Yes. And I presumed it was going to be because they've already introduced this idea of black magic that yeah. it, it was to get her blood in some way. But then yeah. that never really comes into it. Whether that that, that is a part, I don't know. It's, so yeah, you're right. Right near the start of the film, there's this there's this very strange evening out where. Uh, Sylvie and her boyfriend, Roberto, uh, go and have dinner with this uh, African couple. Who, mm. uh, uh, and just out, out of nowhere, they uh, they start talking about witch doctors and witchcraft. Yeah. And, um, uh, yeah, you choose a victim and uh, through spells or potions, you, you drive them insane. And then he just goes... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't scare you, did I? I was just making all of that up. And um, so much weight is put on that scene. Yes. As though, so it, is that the answer to everything? 
is there, like a Rosemary's Baby conspiracy, yeah. is, is everyone involved in driving her mad or is she having a nervous breakdown and this is this is absolutely her paranoia? Yeah. Um, or some other uh, uh, wackadoodle theory I saw on, on YouTube after I watched it, which some guy um, thinks that uh, everyone in the movie is inside her head. <laughs> yes, I think I know the one you told. I saw, yeah, and that's not, I wouldn't. I, 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 I don't. I think that's a step too the far. Final she, does, she does see people who are in her head. Yes. Um, a, a couple of people. She has, she has very clear hallucinations. I mean, she has a psychotic yeah, break yeah. At, the, at the end of the movie. Um, but to believe that absolutely everyone is is in her head makes a step too far. Well, to me, it doesn't work because of the final scene. The fact that as an audience we are still seeing this after she is dead that doesn't that doesn't match up for me. That doesn't quite 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 make sense there. But yeah, I think that's it. That that scene where they're talking because I think. I, I think the boyfriend also says something about, oh, yes, well, there's sacrifices. People are sacrificed all around the world. It even happens here yeah. in Europe or something like that. Yes. So immediately yeah. you go, oh, well, that's what's going to happen. That's yeah. what's going to happen. Because um, I think I had picked up, because, I, I mean, I knew nothing about the film uh, uh, when I watched it. I, I didn't know anything about the plot, but I did notice that people kind of watching her, and I thought, mm, is this going to be something where people are manipulating her in some way? So, yeah, when the cult thing was mentioned, I was like, oh, well, this is what it is. And it, it, there's a cult. And yeah. they're getting her blood somehow. They're manipulating yeah. her to, to you know, then there's going to be some kind of sacrifice. So they want her for some, you know, ne nefarious reason. But, yeah, that's never really explained, is it, to be fair? Not at all. Uh, not at all. Um, the, I mean, one of the frustrating things about the movie is... Uh, you read lots of different plot synopsis. I mean, I went to various plot synopsis to try and find out what her what her job was. Yeah, lab chemistry chemist. It's lab chemist yeah. type thing. And one person suggested that yes, she was a chemist working in a lab, and they were they were making perfume. That was my presumption because of the title. Yeah, but that was my presumption because of the title and because of some of the test tubes and that and. Um, then you start to, th that makes an awful lot of sense. And I, I wish they had just flat out said that in the movie because uh, the cult could have introduced this uh, psychotropic substance. Yes. She could have, yeah, she, yeah, she could yeah. have breathed it in. Or, uh, and uh, what I suspect might also have happened is that the, the, the perfume they're creating, the, the, the one that she sort of samples towards the start, is so close to the perfume that her mother used to wear. Yes. That's what brings back all these repressed memories. Yeah. I did wonder whether it was going to turn out to be Holt identifies woman to be victim, does all of this stuff to try and drive mm. her mad. Turns out she's already mad and crazy, and then she turns the, tape, <laughs> she turns the tables yes. on them and kills them all. And that is kind of what happens until the very, very end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where it seems to be saying that her turning the tables on them was it was yes. actually all in her head. Because um, I wondered if there would be, because of the title and then because of seeing her in the lab, I wondered if it was going to be, uh, how, how do I explain this? If the idea of perfume and the sense of smell yeah. was going to be woven into the plot more in the same way as um, maybe like audio is in in, in, in Blowout, you know, with uh, uh, Brian ah. De Palma's Blowout, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 whether there was, you know, uh, and, and things like Barbarian Sound Studio, stuff like that. But, but, but it wasn't like that. That's it. it wasn't. I mean, I'm, I mean, I don't know if I'm jumping, I don't know if I'm jumping too far now, but because then we are talking about the whole, the whole, what the whole thing means. But yeah, at the end of the day, what was, I think we probably agree, don't we? Obviously, she was being manipulated by everyone. It was yes. a cult. They Very wanted so. her to kill herself. They wanted to drive her mad yes. to kill herself. Why? What was the point? Why could they not just kill her? Why? How? How were they doing it? That's a good it? question. And why? How so, could be this perfume thing, couldn't it? Like, you, you theorise there. Yeah. So... So some theories about the film I've read suggest that uh, these repressed memories uh, of, of her mother and her mother's death and, and a, an attack on her by one of her mother's lovers 
are actually implanted false memories by the cult, but I'm not sure there's right, anything okay. in the film that, that can... Actually, I say that. I was going to say there's nothing in the film that can back it up, but they buy her a vase that she remembers being on her mother's sideboard. Yes. How can anyone in the cult possibly have known what vase her mum had back yeah. when she was a girl? Um, well, so is that a Oh, no, they couldn't. Sign? Because the of oh, the love the, yes. the the love of the stepfather, whoever it was, was there. Yeah, so I suppose yeah, yeah. he he would, Christ wouldn't he? Right, yeah. See, th- but this is how dri- it drives you mad. Dense it is in a way, isn't mad. it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you like it? Oh yeah, yeah. I thought it was great. Yeah, yeah, really, Excellent. yeah, really, really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, I thought it was great. I, it, 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 I probably could have done with fifteen minutes cutting off it. I say that pretty much about most horrors. You know, for me, a horror yeah. or a comedy needs to be ninety minutes. And, and, and you yes. don't unless it's unless yes. it's a, 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 a very special case. Uh, Some yeah. can get away with it, yes. Uh, 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 um, but I, I mean, I, I, I loved it from just the point of of the 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 puzzle, you know, of watching it as as you know, a puzzle box. Um, how and much Italian? How much Italian horror cinema are you? Not much. So I, I, like I said, Inferno. Recently, I've seen Suspiria. Yeah. Um, I several years ago, I decided I was going to start getting the. Uh, oh, what's the video? The the DVD um, imprint. Uh, well, the, the yellow ones, like the the, the Jello ones. The um, yeah, yeah. Shameless. Shameless. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I saw a couple uh, of falsey things. I've seen the Beyond. I've seen the Beyond. And oh yeah, yeah. But yeah, not massively. Not massively off here. Um, and I think out of the suggestions you sent, I I didn't watch the trailers. I just had a bit of a scan. Just clicked here and there, just because again, I yeah, think yeah. they want out spoiling. Um, and I was familiar with I heard of Don't Torture a, a, a Duckling, and there was another one you suggested that I I, I was oh the Solange Solange. Um, which I was kind of familiar yeah. with, but but yeah, I think the reason I went for this one was because it, it just wasn't a slasher. It, it, it seemed yeah. to suggest it was like, oh, this is interesting. This yeah. looks like it could be a bit more psychological thriller. Uh, it looks like it's got a bit more of a creepy, unsettling vibe to it. You know, let 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 let's give this a go. But no, I thought it was great. I really enjoyed it. I mean, I'm presuming obviously from what you're saying, you did as well. I I loved it. Yeah. Um, I, but whilst I was watching it, I was thinking. Oh, have I chosen something? Have I picked something that's a bit a bit obtuse here? Because no, no, I no. Can, I can completely see how someone could be yeah, yeah, yeah. 100% turned off by this movie. Well, no it's, question. I suppose, I suppose uh, uh, um, I've, I've not been able to bring this word up for a while, actually. It, it's problematic in, in, in points, isn't it, I suppose? With the, um, oh, we've got a black character in a horror film, so we've got to throw a voodoo in there. Yeah. You know that that's in there, isn't it? I mean, they don't make a whole lot of it. Obviously, you, you know, in the end, there's not a whole lot of it. And obviously, there's the rape scene, which yeah. I mean, what? I mean, it certainly wasn't tasteful, but it wasn't terribly tasteless, I suppose. I don't think it was exploitative. Uh, no, and they, they, there was a. She pretty- certainly, she, uh, certainly. I'm I'm not a fan of rape scenes in movies. No, 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 no. Put that yeah, out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, she was, at, at the very least, fully clothed. Yes. If the camera the camera wasn't leering, leering at her no. whilst she was being raped, which, um, thank heavens for small mercies. I mean, well, there she was a flash around. of, um, there was a flash of pubes. You're right, there was. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, no, like you said, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't overly. We're so we're so unused to being, seeing it? those now that, that, that I think that just passed me by as, as some kind of merkin. <laughs> yes, yeah. But that's... but given when the film was made, no, you're you're right. That, <laughs> that was probably her. It probably was. I mean, it 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 took her an awfully long time to to, to select which brick she was going to use to bash him over the head with. I yes. was just thinking, I was fucking clock him. Just just, yeah, just yeah, yeah. clock him. Yeah, yeah. And 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 uh, 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 um, there's. Well, it's a horror film. So, but but she she's got the. Um, I think it's actually in that scene. Is it? She she's been walking around in the dress which is see through. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, you know. So this is she this, spends you know, an awful lot of time you know, in 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 her nightdress. I mean, as, yes, as the film true. goes on, yeah, yeah. she's and it yeah. becomes more dreamlike or nightmare like. Yeah, yeah. She 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 very rarely gets dressed for the day. 
for you talking about kind of dream like for you how did you feel about how the um how the uh fantasy the the fantasies in her head how, visually did that disappoint how that was that was shown or I certainly think that, so um, for, for people who haven't seen the film, she has a couple of really strong hallucinations. One, uh, a couple of times she hallucinates seeing her mother. Yes. Uh, applying perfume, and, and that's the, the, the lady in black. Yes. That's the title. Uh, and later on she has, she has conversations with a little girl who's very similar to Alice in Alice in Wonderland. But it's one of the things that disappointed me there, as an audience, uh, as a viewer, you, ju you jump ahead of the of the movie quite significantly at that point. And I think yes. that you twigged that, that she's speaking to her younger self yeah. way earlier than the movie intends you to. Yes. And the movie then then has to play a bit of catch up. I was I was disappointed with that aspect of it. Well, um, I, I, sorry, we'll come back to it. But yeah, just because also, yes, I agree. The bit which disappointed me maybe was when the three of them were in the car, the, th the boyfriend... The Andy, the, the 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 I think was he supposed to be a, a scientist as well or something? I'm not too sure. And there was an old guy. I think yeah. it was the porter. Because they immediately yes. go, "Oh, it's a conspiracy." Oh, absolutely. These people are watching it. Yes, yeah. there is that thing of, "Well, hang on, are they double bluffing, or am I just being too clever?" Yeah, but 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 yes. So I agree. I felt they give things away a little bit too soon. But sorry, Definitely. carry on. I mean, there's certainly there are certainly other there are other. Italian giallo films, which are sort of murder mystery films, mm. which which very successfully walk a tightrope of is what's happening supernatural or or is there a real world explanation? Um, the Night Evelyn Came Out From The Grave is, is a great example where all, all the way through I was thinking, this has to be supernatural. This this can't <laughs> be this can't be a true giallo. It yes. can't be a true murder mystery because this has there has to be a supernatural element to it. And and it resolves beautifully. But this particular film tipped its hand too yes. soon, too too many times. Yes, and I think I, I don't think there's really a point where you're ever like, well, this isn't going to turn out to be some natural. She's not actually, you know, insane and imagine something's going on. You know that there's something, uh, whether it's supernatural or not, but you know something satanic or yes, there's some kind of horrific element here that's that's doing things i mean where it's where it's successful and i actually don't think this is intentional i, I do think it tips its hand too early too soon <sighs> where it makes uh, hay out of that is when she has her she has her breakdown and then she she goes on her killing spree and and I thought, oh, that's the end of the movie. There there wasn't a conspiracy. She's mad all along. Right. Okay. She's gone completely nuts. It's all in her head, and she's killing them all. And, yeah. and that's it. It's a film that presented itself as being about a cult, and it's not. It's about mm. a woman who's who's gone psychotic, and then it pulls that rug out from under and goes, no, it's a cult all along. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not it's only the, the very end coda is so shocking uh, that yeah. I, will, I, will, I will give it that. I'll give it yes. a break for that. And again, I suppose, uh, you know, if you haven't seen the film, what would, so at the very end, she, she, she commits suicide, she kills herself. And the very yeah. final scene is there, it, I don't know, un, in some underground kind of area. And yeah. She's laid out dead on the table. And up to this point, apart from, apart from when she kills and the little finger, the, there hasn't really been much gore at all, has no, it? Has, it's only no. in the last bit we, we, you know, we get the gore. Um, they cut her open. Uh, I mean, there's this lovely shot, isn't it? This lovely from 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 a buff shot looking down when they're all gathered around her. They take a step in to look at her. They yeah. cut her open, and then they just all are taking a little bit, a little organ, a little bit here, running off, nibbling yeah. away and eating it. And it's all silent. The the, the score is unexplained. Really great all the way through. It just yeah. stops, and you just hear their feet and they're shuffling and. Uh, uh, and it, it's meeting. a fantastic it's just, ending. It and really then the is. camera just dollies away. Yeah. Uh, and you get further and further away from that room and you see the, the odd latecomer rush in, grab yeah, something, yeah, yeah, run yeah. away. And it just, and then it's Coming just, for seconds, maybe. that's it. That's it. That's your lot. That's how the film ends. You know? Unexplained. Holy and you're not shit. completely sure. Yeah. So to the music, I mean, the, Again, you know, when I kind of think of the Italian horror music, I do think of you know things like you know, gobbling, 
Um, oh, and, I, and, I love Goblin. Yeah, well, that's and things like that. This this is feels a little bit more orchestral. Does it? it's a little bit more classical? Yeah. But but then at the same time, there is those really kind of those. Again, I'm not sure what they're playing it on. But those kind of like violin string whines and little stabs, yeah. and it, 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 so there's a so there's a scene where she she wakes up and she thinks that something's wrong, and she just, she just walks through her apartment at night. And some of the rooms have, uh, have got the lights off, and there's a there's a, uh, a flashing neon light from outside, lighting the living room. Yeah. She just walks around, and then those whining strings come in. She goes to the kitchen. She picks up the cleaver. She walks around again. Nothing happens, but <laughs> but but especially because of the score, I'm thinking, oh, this is. I, I'm not sure I like this. Yeah. But but, but something, it was, something's off. Scares. Something something's something's very off about this, about what's about what's happening. What am I watching yeah, what, again? I was thinking, what, what something's happening in front of my eyes. What is it? What am I watching? But it work, and it works for the jump scares. I mean, there's some genuine little woo, little, little you know, little, yeah. little, little little moments there which work, work do work quite nicely. Just I suppose maybe to uh, 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 have a brief ten seconds of uh, of more light hearted thoughts. Yes. What did you make to the boyfriend's sexual technique? Oh man, um, it's 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 digital, isn't it? It's, 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 he's either on or he's off. He's he's a pile driver. He's well, well, he, he's, he's just he's just. Well, no, but if you noticed, he 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 doesn't thrust. He more rocks side to side. And again, I thought that's just a bad sex scene. But then I started to think. No, is this? I mean, again, this is what the film does. I'm thinking, no, is this some kind of metaphor? Is this tip? Is this foreshadowing? What? But maybe it was just bad sex. Do we think? I think the focus for me in that scene was. Uh, by the way, he's an absolute sleaze. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you get again, a lot, you, you could debate you how a, consensual that sex was. I suppose, couldn't you? The, you know, there's you can. And there's a there's a flashback scene. To, to, I mean, we've we've spoken about her mother taking a lover or a stepfather. There are some people who read that as a rape scene. I, yes, I, I don't think yep. it was. I, I, uh, but no, I di I didn't get the that impression. Way, but the way her, as passive as her mother was in that scene, she was as passive. Sylvie was as passive in in her sex scenes. So, I mean, there's. An awful lot of Freud runs through an awful lot of these Italian movie yeah. history uh, movies. They they love Freudian shit in in their movies, <laughs> and um, there's a very clear, uh, strong case to be made here uh, about her having uh, an idealistic attachment to uh, uh, an absentee father figure when because mm. he died, uh, a, a sort of A horrific sexual awakening moment where she witnesses her mother having sex with someone who's yeah. not her father, and then then the threat of sexual violence upon her as a, as a small child has in, in, uh, infected her as an adult as she, she moves mm. through life and, and 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 has these relationships. Um, I don't feel like. I'm qualified really to to do a full Freudian analysis no, of it. No, no, no. Does she, so does she? And I'm I'm aware that maybe a lot of this chat is going to be what happens. What 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 was this? What was this? But it's the nature of the film. Do you think she kills her mother? Because because we see again for anybody who hasn't seen it, we see a um, we 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 see again this uh, vision, this hallucination of a mother. Her younger self goes up, pushes the mum off. Yeah. So. My presumption there was again. This was kind of metaphorical, or whatever, for the fact that her mum had killed herself. Something to do with the da daughter. So there was something oh, there no, I, that I, metaphorically I, I, she had killed her mother. That oh, had no, led her to suicide. No, I think she did it. You actually think she pushed the no, mother? I, no, I think she pushed her mother off the roof, and be, be because of. Uh, because of this, the, the, her, her seeing this uh, 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 sexual liaison with this lover, or she's so the very, very, very first shot of the movie is is, is a picture that uh, of her as a little girl yes. staring up lovingly at her dad with her mum off to one side, 
uh, she she has this she has this uh, and then her her dad is away a lot because he's he's a captain on some sort of sail boat thing we we just don't know he's, he's he's something to do with the water and then then he drowns and he never comes back um, so I'm 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 very comfortable uh, but believing that she uh, she had she's developed some sort of uh, I, I don't know what the psychoanalytical term for it is, but she's she's got some sort of father figure, absolutely yes. father figure attachment. Yeah. And then she sees her mum as, um, what do we call it? The, uh, is it the Madonna whore? I have uh, the foggiest. Dichotomy. So you, your mum is this sort of saintly... Uh, figure. Provider, benefactor, but then... the. the, the there comes a point in everyone's development when you realise that your parents aren't have got feet <laughs> yeah. of clay as well, and are not and heroes. They're flesh, yeah, not they're flesh and blood, and they're yeah. not heroes. And sometimes you walk in on your mum, and you find out that um, she likes to have sex. Yes, and it's there's going to be this this key uh, moment, and and guess what? And it's not with your dad. <laughs> are you speaking from experience here? Because this is you, this is very convincing. <laughs> No. no, my parents never had sex. <laughs> no, no, neither did mine. So, well, I mean, the once, obviously, to, you know, to, to 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 have me. No, not even not even the once for me. <laughs> what? So, so, right, okay. Now, let me maybe go through a little, a bunch of things that I observed, and did these mean summer or did they not? Or what? So, okay. At the very start. Wouldn't this way, be just, brilliant if you could play this game with every movie? Yeah, does, with this every movie. <laughs> does this mean something? Does this mean something? Does this mean something? I mean, I, I suppose before I do get into this as well, because I'm, I'm going to talk about that uh, in, in her room at the start, and it's that, you know, blue-purple room. And again, the colour yeah, yeah. palette's lovely, isn't it? Red seems to be used, and I know this is a bit of a thing in horror films, isn't it? but red can yeah. seem to be used sparingly. There's odd little objects. There might be, like, one object in each room or at times where the boy yeah. in those red PJs when they're, you know, yeah. socialising, the alarm clock. There's different, the pencils, you know, the different things like that. Yeah. Um... But she leaves, she turns the lights on and then leaves the house. Yeah, what's that about? Don't know. She has a baby figure that she puts she in her back. She keeps in her purse. Yeah. Yeah, she carries it around with her all the time. What's that about? Don't, don't know. know. <laughs> don't know. There was, there was, by her door, there's a sculpture that, I think, it's supposed to be a leaf, I think. I think it is, yes. But it, it, but it looks like it's dipped in blood. Yeah, it's kind of fleshy coloured. Yeah. And then it's got the the red veins again, mm. which again I wonder if that was kind of for skin, whether again that was that kind of foreshadowing or something, you know. There was everybody, was everybody in on it? Everybody in the film? Do they they all show up at the end? The only people who I couldn't spot at the end were the two people she works with at the lab. Right, okay, yeah, okay. Which doesn't mean that they weren't there, I just no. didn't see them. So it is a huge um, conspiracy where everybody she's meeting... Fucking enormous. Yeah, I mean, that's it, big. it beggars belief. <laughs> well, which I suppose would then maybe feed into the idea that maybe you know, it's not real, maybe this is a summit she's imagined, maybe it is all a paranoia because of the extent. I mean, I even got to the point where... There's this, I can't remember where in the movie this came, but there's a scene where she's just walking, she's walking down a tu tunnel, and a guy's spray hosing yeah. the tunnel. And I mean, I know, of course, in reality, this would happen naturally, but she's coming up to it, so he moves and he yeah. comes over. Again, it was like things were being orchestrated, like, you know, people were, again, were moving, you know, yeah. to, to, to manipulate her or guide her or, or, oh. or whatever. Absolutely everything in this movie is uh, machine tool designed to, I believe, to give you a sense that what's what's real is unreal. The very first shot of the photograph that we see, it's how the, it's how the film opens, is um, coloured. It's a black and white photo that's, yeah. that's been coloured. So the very first image we see is a manipulated image. Uh, here's something that's real and we just we just made it slightly... By trying to make it extra real by adding colour, we've made it seem sort of false. Mm. Um, she's got the, her bedroom that you mentioned earlier. She's got a really prominent painting on her, her bedroom wall, which kind of looks like her bedroom. Right. Yeah, I didn't notice that. On her on her table, she's got a little cardboard 3D cutout 
stage. She's got the stage yeah. with the with the curtains, curtains and stuff. Yes. It's like, and it's like, oh well, this is oh, everything is setting when she goes to that mm. um, dinner. The inside of uh, the inside of this African couple's um, house is done up like a fucking jungle. Yes, it's. I mean, there are there are fake leaves everywhere. It's like so again, real but but fake. Yes. Um, so, it, like it's it's theatre. She she's a she's an actor in a in a production. You know, she's so uh, yeah. Following one direction. The, one of the articles I read about it suggested that she sh- suffered from something called Truman Show syndrome. Yes. Which Cult is which got, now <laughs> after the film, yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Where you think that the, the world you're living in is being staged, yeah, you're, yeah, being, yeah. you're being manipulated, yeah. and it's sort of sort of unreal. And absolutely everything in the movie is geared towards making you think that uh, the world is just slightly, slightly mm. off, slightly artificial. What? And sorry, yeah, go. On. I, I just, I was just going to say, I just, I just think that aspect of it, uh, the cinematography, the set design, the set dressing, mm. and the lighting of it is probably some of the best I've ever seen. Because yeah, yeah. Yeah. not every movie that I spend time poring over, uh, what's sitting on her on her bedside table, yeah, yeah. for God's sake, I was thinking, oh God, that yeah, well, looking is going to come back into it. Is, is that? I mean, there was a moment in it when she got. She got gifted the vase that used to belong to her mum. A scene before that, we had a slow pan across her bedroom and she's got loads of vases on her bedside table. And I rewound the movie to watch that back to see if she already owns that vase. I mean, it, I mean yes. it, can, it can drive you to that level of specificity. And, and again, I, I think that's an amazing what, trick to That's what makes it so always maybe even creepy because... Uh, uh, my memory of Rosemary, to compare it to Rosemary's Baby, my, my memory yeah. of Rosemary's Baby is, 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 you know, maybe a little bit hazy, but in Rosemary's Baby, you maybe feel that there's various people in her apartment manipulating her or guiding yes. her. Where with this, you, it's people in shops. It's yeah. possibly people she Rosemary's works with. Baby. It's her friend. It, it, it's everywhere, isn't it? Rosemary's Baby is, 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 is absolutely superb at putting you, I believe, in, in the position of a woman who's being gaslit mm. and, and, and even mansplained. I think, I think probably Rosemary's experience in Rosemary's Baby is probably all too familiar to a lot of, a lot of women. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the perfume of the woman in black is, is one of, if not the best movie I've ever watched, which puts me as a viewer in yeah, the yeah. place of someone who who is having a nervous breakdown and who is questioning everything this sense yeah, yeah, of paranoia yeah. but not through loads of tricks just almost by inviting me uh, like i said earlier lots of signs with no signifiers by by suggesting that everything has meaning i can't relax while i'm watching no 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 yes because i have to constantly go, does that mean something does that mean something and suddenly I'm being paranoid. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, being yeah, yeah. actively yeah. paranoid sitting and watching this film about a woman who is paranoid. And I think um, I think that's an amazing trick to pull off. Well, I'm quite sure it does resonate with... So I, I know... Um, I think it was you, Nuke of the Nuke. Some, I know somebody in, in the Discord <clears> said <throat> that... Um, after they watched it, they said, I don't know how, how much in jest it was, or how much seriousness there was to it. But they put... I know how she feels. You know, they said, oh, I thought it was a great film. I know how she feels. Um, yeah. So like I said, you know, I guess it will resonate, uh, uh, again, perhaps more with females. Uh, 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 but, you know, it will res- resonate with people, that that feeling of gas, gas, gaslighting and, 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 and such. Is there anything then that, anything that you were a little bit disappointed by or it, it, that didn't work for you? I went in expecting it to be more of a, of a, a straightforward jello, so mm. uh, a lot, a lot more uh, uh, murder mystery. I, I, I thought the ki- I, I'll be honest. I thought the killings were going to happen sooner. Right. Yes. Okay. I, I'm not. So as I was watching it, I was a little disappointed that nothing seemed to be happening. I wouldn't say. In retrospect. I'm glad it doesn't do that. I've got a ton of movies in my collection. Yeah, that yeah, that do, 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 yeah, do yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I, 
I think I don't, I like movies that don't give answers. I just think, yes. I think the, the balance is slightly off. Right. Uh, like, like we've agreed. Um, I think it tips its hands a couple of times too early. Yes. I think it's a little yeah. bit too obtuse in, in other areas. I mean, it's such a fine balance to yeah, get yeah. it right. I mean, it's walking a tightrope, this movie. If it had got to the other end without slipping, I think it would be an absolute masterpiece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, I don't think it pulls it off. I think there's probably a little yes. bit too, too, too much like the fucking, like the hippos. Are they important? Yeah, are they important? It, it, gets yeah. to, it gets to a point where I'm overloaded with this stuff now. Yes. And you, you, you could have pulled back a little bit. But what it was, what it's going for, not many movies go for. No. And it, it gave it a good old swing for the fences. And I love a movie that swings for the fences and fails rather than a movie that plays yeah. safe. I think I would have liked, and unlike you, you know, I, I, I don't need answers. I don't need it to be answered. I, I'm quite happy to put my own interpretation and look at some of the clues. Yeah. And, you know, I don't, I think I would have liked a little bit more of a, a little bit more explanation, just a little bit more. Just make things yeah. a little bit yeah. more clear. Maybe a few. That 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 would have been nice. I think yes. my my only disappointment, and then again, this isn't fair because this is this is me wanting in it to be a film that it wasn't, and presumably didn't want to be. Yeah. But um, I really liked when um, it's the scene where the the girl pushes the mother off the um, off, off off the veranda, and in yeah. the background there's that beautiful kind of purple sky, mm. and it feels fantastical. That feels. Like mm. it isn't real. That feels like it's a hallucination. Mm. I would have liked a little bit more of that throughout the when there were these more uh, fantastical uh, uh, moments or hallucinatory moments. Yeah. That we just had a little bit more of that kind of playfulness or that that cool or something again, just to make it a little bit yeah. more unsettling. I mean, I guess maybe that wasn't what they wanted because they didn't want people to go, "Oh, this is a fantasy. Oh, this bit's in her head." But yes, that was because that was a lovely moment. No, I absolutely I would have liked understand more of that. Thing. I mean, when the when the little girl appears, I mean, it's it's screamingly obvious. Yes, that that girl is in her head, like from the start. Yeah, no one is ever going to buy that. Oh, she lives in she's in one of the other apartments. So yeah, no, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, yeah. I think I agree with you. Lean into that. If we're all on the same page, and we, yeah. we know as soon as the girl appears, cuckoo, cuckoo. Yeah, yeah. Lean into it. Yeah. Um, I guess for, for a film that almost from the start sets its stall out as reality is kind of unreal anyway and everything is kind of staged, you, you'd have to go... It would take someone like Dario Argento mm. to to get to the next step with a scene like that. Yes. I mean, you, you, yeah. you've seen Inferno, so you know what that man yeah, yeah, yeah. can do. Yeah. Yes. And perhaps given given that this was... One of his two films, Francesco Borelli, just didn't have it in him. No, well, I, again, it's unusual to make such a such a you know you know a good film and then and then not really uh, you know go 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 do any more. Just slightly slightly weird, but so then so so before we wrap it up, then let's just finish by saying this is what happens in the film. Am I right? Are we right? Okay, so okay, okay, okay. she is being manipulated by all these people in real life because they are a cult. They want her to commit suicide so they can eat her. We don't know yes. why. We don't know why she has to commit suicide. We don't know why. We don't know how they do this. Mm. And then obviously certain scenes such as her killing those, the, the, those three characters are in her head. That yes. she's hallucinating and she she's genuinely going mad. Yes. But she wasn't going mad before, maybe. This has only just started because they're manipulating her in ways we do Maybe there was a tox maybe there was something on that thing that stabbed her. Although I think as it's your turn, start to hear so voices. Gonna make me, uh, I'm gonna have to go back and rewatch it and see <laughs> when her first hallucination does her first hallucination occur before or after we think Isn't they, there something they got in the to her? Isn't there something in the graveyard where she can hear noising and it stops? And that's very early on in the. That's very early when on. When she's at when her mother's she's, grave. She's visiting her mother's grave. I mean, right. I, I, she, she's already. I, she ha, I believe, genuinely believe she has this thing in her past. Yes. I think there's these repressed memories. Yes, she's uh, definitely they're, disturbed, they're, isn't they're she? Bubbling yeah. under. Um, they've, they've chosen her, and I think the. 
their act of driving her mad just just unleashes all of this. I'm I'm just a little disappointed that she didn't kill a few of them in in, yeah, yeah, yeah. in real life. Yeah. I think that would have been a real nice real nice. So imagine if <coughs> imagine if the tenants and Rosemary's baby went, "Okay, Rosemary, her. We'll we'll choose her. Yeah. She'll she, she'll get pregnant by the devil and uh it, and it turns out that she's not Rosemary; she's Norman Bates, and she goes psycho. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. would have been. That would have yeah, been. Yeah, that would have been a good. I would have liked her to have had just got a couple of them before she got, went. Yes. I, so I uh, think then I think that's maybe where for me the film just falls down a bit. So I, like I said, I don't need the answers. I think maybe what I needed was just a clue or a hint as to how they were doing this. Yeah. So well. Yeah. And why they why they needed to sacrifice. Just maybe those two things. Maybe that's yes. all I needed just a bigger hint for. Just yeah. those two things, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Just those things. Well You're making me th- Yeah, go on. I uh I I I, I hate to do this because it's tell we shouldn't really do this, but we, we do usually rate the films out of oh, five. Okay. What what would you give okay. this out of five? Oh my bad. Do you do halves? Yes. I'm probably going to have to go four and a half. Oh wow, that's that's good. I you see, I I went three and a half. I went give me three a, and give, a half. Give me, a, give me some, give me some uh, context. What would well, I so think, for this channel? What would Jaws be? Because uh, Jaws is a five. Would you, uh, yeah, I'm, Jaws would be a five. Jaws would be a five. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I um I think I was giving it three and a half because I I think for me, I think what was just letting it down was just the pacing a little bit. And 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 just yeah, maybe not enough answered. But you know what? I think I'm I'm maybe going to be a bit gutless, and I'm going to you know the more we discuss it, the more maybe in retrospect I realise you know uh, I think I'm gonna I'm knocking it up to a four now. I, I might have given four. my extra point from three and a half to four and a half might be just to do with just just how much I I, I love the aesthetic yes. of these kind of movies. Yeah. So it, it is my jam. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm pre-programmed to love this kind of That's stuff. That's another so thing. That the little girl was eating point. jam. The little girl was eating jam. Was that yeah. foreshadowing? <laughs> she was eating jam. The little girl. Well, she, she was sticking was, her, yeah, and eating jam. Was that foreshadowing? It was, oh, it was certainly her jam. But yeah. Well, if it, if it was, then it was her in her own mind foreshadowing. What foreshadowing was gonna what was going to happen to her. Yeah. By, wow. <laughs> Who knows. Thank wow. you so much uh, for coming on, Andrew. I've really, really enjoyed pleasure. that. That's been great. Yeah, will, you please, will you please plug your YouTube channel, please? Uh, Grumpy Andrew's Horror House. Will you give us a plug and tell us where we need to go? And Oh, yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's on YouTube. It's called Grumpy Andrew's Horror House. So if you want more of this face <laughs> spouting more of that shit that you've just heard, <laughs> then that's where, you, that's where you go to get it. There we go. And please do. Like I said, please do, because it is, it is a really great channel and it's really great videos. Thank, Thank you, you Andrew. Thank you. I do hope you will join us again. You don't need to answer now because that's putting pressure on you, but I do hope we'll see you again. I've had a blast. Lovely. Great. So have I. That's that's absolutely wonderful. Thank you, Andrew. Take care. Look after yourself and thank you. Well, we always say wave at the camera and say goodbye. Bye. <laughs>